Alrighty guys, so we're gonna get deeper into this factoring with these quadratic uh, quadratic trinomials. We're gonna get into complex trinomials. Um, and that's our learning objective for the day. I can factor complex trinomials. Now when I'm talking complex trinomials, really the only difference is this value right here. If it's a one there, then we could just worry about the last value. We could do that whole X game thing we were talking about with finding um, stuff that multiplies to make the last, that adds to make the middle. But that changes if we have an actual value here different than one. So let's take a look at some of these changes. Here are four steps we're gonna follow, oh, sorry, to factor this stuff out now. Step number one, list the factors of the first and the third term. Step number two, check to see what combination makes the middle. And we're going to combine these by multiplying and then adding. Once we find that combo, we're going to put them next to each other and circle the diagonals. Each circle becomes the parentheses for the final answer. So we're going to follow those four steps. Let me show you what I mean by those four steps with this example right here. I have 5x squared plus 33x plus 18. Step number one, factor and list those factors of the first and the third term. So 5x squared is just 5, so that's an easy one. That's just 5 times 1. The last is 18. There's a few factors with 18. We have 18 times 1. We have 9 times 2. We have 6 times 3. Can you think of any others? I can't. So we're going to stick with those there. Now we're going to check by multiplying and then adding. So we're going to go straight across. 5 times 18 and then the 1 times 1. 5 times 18, 1 times 1. I'm trying to make that 33 in the middle. I can tell you right now it's going to be too big. So 18 and 1 doesn't work. Let's check the other way. Let's go 5 times uh, 1 and 1 times 18. 5 times 1 is 1. 18 times 1 is 18. Add those together. That makes 23. That also does not work. So the 18 and the 1 is no good. Now let's check the other one. I have 5 times the 9. And the 1 times the 2. 5 times 9 makes 45. 1 times 2 makes 2. 45 plus 2 is 47. No good. Let's try the opposite side. Let's go 5 times the 2. And 1 times the 9. 5 times 2 makes 10. 1 times 9 makes 9. 10 plus 9 is 19. Also no good. So we could cross those ones off. Last, we have the 5 and 1 and 6 times 3. 5 times 6 makes 30. 1 times 3 makes 3. 30 plus 3, bingo! There's our combo that makes 33. So we're going to take that 6 and 3, and we're going to write it right next to our 5 and 1. This combo works going straight across. Gosh, on the other side. Going straight across 5 times 6, 1 times 3. 5 times 6 is 30. 1 times 3 is 3. 30 plus 3 makes the 33 in the middle, which we want. So now that I have my combo that works, we're going to go to step 3, which is circle diagonally. And each circle is my parentheses for the answer. So now I'm looking at this one here. I have 5, and then I follow it all the way down to the 3. I have 1, and then I follow it all the way up. To the six. Those are my parentheses. Five and then three, one and then six. We had x squared in the beginning, in the first term, which means our x needs to be at the beginning. And I'm going to replace that one with the x because I don't need to put one x down. Look at the signs. Everything was positive, so we're going to keep everything positive with our signs. 
we have factored this trinomial that's a little more complex. So let me type this thing out. I've got parentheses, 5x plus 3, close parentheses, open another one, x plus 6. Trying to get that combo. We found it. Let's do another one. But I want to get a little more complicated here. I want to look at level two. Level two, we're going to be dealing with some negatives. But fortunately, the steps are going to be the same. Same four steps. Step one, list the factors. Step two, check to see what combo makes the middle. Step three, circle the diagonals. Step four, diagonals are the parentheses. So looking at our trinomial here, I have a three and then I have a negative seven. So what times what makes three? Well, only three times one, right? What times what makes seven? Only seven times one, right? But this is where we have to be a little careful because we have a minus sign with that seven. So I want to think of combos that make negative seven. And the way I could do that is by making it a negative seven with a positive one or a positive seven with a negative one. Now that I have all possible factors, let's start checking combos. If I do the top three times negative seven, one times one, that makes negative 21 plus one, which is negative 20, not anywhere close to the middle of our four. Let's try the other way. Let's go three times one on the bottom, one times the negative seven here on top. That's three minus seven makes negative four. Close, but we want positive four. So that combo is no good. Meaning it must be the bottom. Three times seven, no good. One times negative one, no good because it's too big, right? We're trying to get four, not 20. So we have to switch it around. We're gonna go three times negative one, and then we're gonna go one times positive seven. Because if I use this combo, I get negative three plus seven, which makes the positive four we want. Now that we have our combo, let's go to step three, which is circle diagonals. And now that I have it circled, every circle is the parentheses in the answer. So we're gonna follow each circle. I have the three down to the seven, so three X plus seven. Then I have the one up to the negative one, which means positive X minus one. See what I'm talking about here? Three down to seven, oops, one up to negative one. That's where the coefficients come in. Three to seven, one to negative one. Let's type this thing up. I've got three x plus seven, x minus one. Some people call it the butterfly method because the diagonals kind of makes it look like butterfly wings. But that's how we get it. Let's see if I can find another one a little more complicated dealing with those negatives still. Yeah, perfect. Now I've got double negative. Negative for the last and negative in the middle. Same thing, same steps. This is gonna be our last example. I have five X squared, so we're looking at factors of five. Okay, five times one, that's it. Then I'm looking at factors of negative nine. Ooh. I have nine times one, I have three times three, but we're talking negatives, right? So I could have a negative nine with a positive one, a negative three with a positive three, or vice versa. And then I could also have a positive nine with a negative one. So here are my possible factors. Now let's find which one gets me to negative four. So let's check some of this stuff out. I'm looking at five times negative nine, which is negative 45. One times one is positive one, way too big. Let's switch them. Let's go five 
times 1 and the 1 times negative 9. 5 times 1 makes 5. 1 times negative 9, of course, is negative 9. 5 plus negative 9, negative 4. Look at that. We found it right away, which means we don't even have to check the others because once you find it, you're done. We want to use that combo, positive 1 and negative 9. Make sure you have it matched up where we're going straight across, though. 5 times 1, positive. 1 times 9, negative, makes negative 9 plus 5, which is negative 4 in the middle. Now that we have our combo lined up, let's circle diagonals. Let's make that butterfly. Let's make that X. And each parentheses is, or each circle is my parentheses. Can you see what the parentheses are going to be already? For one of them, I have 5 and negative 9, so I'm going to have 5x minus 9. The other one was 1 and 1, so I'm going to have 1x plus 1. We're taking care of the signs in our list of factors, guys. The negative 9, the negative 3, the positive, the negative 1, whichever one. So we don't have to worry about subtraction or addition. It's already part of our factors in the list. Just follow the list with the combo that works out. Now that we have it all figured out, we're done. Step four is all done. We have our parentheses. Let's type this thing up. Call it a day. We were 5x minus 9 times x plus 1. Please let me know if you have any questions about this stuff. Um, and then we'll figure it out from there. We'll work together. We'll get this stuff done. Thanks so much. Talk to you guys later.